We all have a they couldn't punish us all story. But what's your, they punished us all, story? Someone allegedly graffitied an antique desk in one of the company bays in basic training when I was at Fort Benning back in 2010. Diaz's pulled the entire company on a Saturday morning about an hour before we're scheduled to hit the range for a live fire. One of the few times we're kind of happy to train. We're all in this fucking rock pit, on our hands and knees bare crawling back and forth waiting for the culprit to admit. We got our asses smoked for two hours. I tried to confess to one of the black drill sergeants, and I'll never forget his response. Your black ass volunteered to join the army. That's the last time I ever better hear of you volunteering ever again. You're not taking this punishment for that a-hole. We know who did it already. I know you ain't do this. But so you know, one of the buses broke down, and we ain't got shit for y'all to do, so this is it. So get the fuck down and crawl, bro. We had a black DS in Foot Leonard Wood who smoked us on Sunday right after we got back from church. Told everybody to go outside for formation and admit who walked into his office and took his Chester fries. Nobody wanted to confess so he started yelling and made everybody do push-ups for a good two hours. He still kept asking who did it. No one confessed. Told everybody to get up and run a mile. As soon as we finished running, we had to crawl on the pit till somebody puked. Ran again for a good mile. We started doing stationary exercises. Everybody was getting pissy at each other telling to fess up, but nobody wanted to. Diaz said, I ain't better see no hero trying to stand up because I know damn well you didn't do it. I know who it is. And y'all won't be getting chow till he gets up. Three hours later. It's chow time. We ran to the chow hall and Diaz was still pissed, so he gave us a minute to eat. As soon as we sat down, he told us to get up and leave. Nobody ate. Ran back to the company and did this shit again till it got hella cold. After it got cold, he told us to head to the bay and start conducting hygiene and after that, toe on the line, at attention. As he walks around looking at us while eating a bag of Chester fries, he calmly says, Privates, I hope y'all realize today's lesson. Don't fuck with my Chester fries. If you from Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. Also, nobody stole shit. I'm just bored with y'all. Good night. At ease. Good times. Went to boarding school. Someone accidentally hit the power on their stereo in the middle of the night. When the prefect went to investigate, someone on the opposite end of the house blasted their stereo for shits and giggles. Since nobody fessed up, the whole house was thrown out of bed and had to do wall sits for like ever. Nobody ever did fess up. I went to a small Catholic elementary school in the 80s. Some 8th grade girls showed up to school wearing jewelry that was prohibited by the dress code. Earrings that were too big, or something. The nun principal got very upset and proceeded to confiscate every piece of jewelry from every student in the school. When they told us this, I was somewhere between 2nd and 4th grade. I distinctly remember my first thought was, They won't take away religious jewelry too. Sure enough, they did. My great aunt had given me a gold crucifix pendant and chain for first penance. She passed away less than a year later. I was very attached to it. I still wear it despite being mostly agnostic these days. So, when our teacher handed out paper envelopes and told everyone to put their jewelry in there with their name and grade on the outside, I was very upset. Upset enough that the main office called my mom because I wouldn't stop crying. They gave us no indication of if or when we'd be getting our stuff back. When she found out why I was so upset, she chewed out the principal for mass seizing valuables from students. All I know is I got my cross back by the end of the day. In seventh grade, we had just had an easy Spanish quiz that was supposed to be added onto our test grades to help boost them. People were talking after the quiz, and the teacher threatened to rip the quizzes in half and just drop them and the kids who were talking just didn't stop. True to his word, he straightened the stack of papers, and tore the whole stack clean in half, and threw it in the garbage. It definitely got the class quiet, that's for sure. I worked for a Ford supplier years ago that did metal stamping and welding. Entire weld department stopped working and went to the break room wanting a meeting with the plant manager over treatment and working conditions. I didn't work in that department, but I heard the plant manager walked in and counted all the people. Only thing he said was, You have 30 seconds to get back to work or all 32 of you are fired. He then walked out. The turnover rate was insane. 
I had a teacher who came in one day positively irate about bags of candy she just bought that went missing. She was convinced someone in the class had stolen them. When no one fessed up, she proceeded to keep us all inside for recess until someone confessed. About a month later a student was looking for some supplies and opened a cabinet in the back. What did he find? The missing bags of candy. So really she punished all of us for forgetting where she put the candy. Never apologized either. At boarding school, they found the wrappers of three bags of chocolate chips that had been stolen from the kitchen. The whole school didn't get dessert for two months. Last month, almost three years later, someone finally admitted it was her. Had a boss at a pizzeria who made every employee pay the amount the register was short by. Only the person who took the money was unaffected. It quickly stopped disappearing. I worked for a sandwich shop for a year, and the owner tried pulling this shit on us. She was taking our tip money to cover lost bread knives and short drawers. I printed and highlighted our state laws that showed what she was doing was illegal and left it in all the employee boxes. I asked them a few days later if they read them and they said they didn't get them so I reprinted them again and passed them out personally. The owner was fucking livid but I laid into her and told her I wasn't the one breaking the law and she straightened out real quick. I demanded she give us all of the money she had taken back and told her never to do it again. It never happened while I was working there but she started taking tips again shortly after I left. I fucking hated her so much. This was during my last year in the Air Force. From what I heard two or three people in my squadron were caught smoking weed. The response from the higher-ups was to raid our dorms, put all of us in the dayroom we had for several hours while they ransacked everyone's rooms looking for weed drugs and basically anything they didn't like. They went as far as taking some people's NORP magazines and for me took an airsoft gun I had that wasn't functional, combat knife that I bought on base, and even down to taking the Bakken, wooden training sword I had. I was eventually able to get them back, but the entire thing was stupid and a big waste of time, really made it easy to decide that I wasn't re-enlisting. High school with uniforms. Last day of grade 12, senior, year is in a week. I come up with the idea that if we all dress down in normal clothes they can't really do anything about it, right? Everyone loves the idea and somehow my idea spreads across the entire grade. Next Friday everyone plans to wear normal clothes. A week passes. I show up in jeans but wait in my car to make sure I'm not the only one to execute my sabotage of the uniform rule. Everyone bustles into their final grade 12 homeroom classes in normal clothes. The national anthem plays. Morning announcements are spewn on the intercom, and things are going rather beautifully. Cocky Laplace Munster is becoming more proud of his ever-promising grade 12 wide fame after day's success. But the last announcement is the principal. Also, any student not in proper uniform is asked to return home, change into legal school attire, and if possible return. If not, you are not welcome on the premises. Entire grade 12 population gets to go to the beach on the last day of our high school careers. They thought they punished us, but they really never could. When I was a 15-year-old boy at summer camp, three guys decided it would be a fun idea to spray insect repellent on the floor and light it on fire, inside a wooden cabin in the middle of the forest. They were having fun watching the fire burn, but then one kid walked in and was obviously shocked to see a fire burning on the floor. He did what any sane person would do, and used a fire extinguisher to put it out. However, using the fire extinguisher meant we had to get a new one to replace it, which meant we had to tell the counselors, which means the kids who started the fire would likely get in trouble. Needless to say they were angry at the kid for trying to save their lives, but more on that later. Fearing the fate of being kicked out of camp, the boys who started the fire were able to manipulate twelve others into accepting the blame for it. Of course, their logic was, they can't kick us all out. Be a bro, take one for the team. It appeared as though their plan had worked. The camp directors decided they wouldn't kick out all 15 of the boys, but they had to face some other kind of punishment. They were banned from the final banquet, only a few nights later. The closer it got to the big evening, the more rattled they got about missing the final big activity of the summer. The special dinner, the jokes, the awards, the slideshow, all the future memories that the staff put together for this night. So when it finally got there, and they weren't allowed in, they were pissed. And in their minds, whose fault was it? The original three for starting the fire? Theirs, for being foolish enough to take the blame for something they didn't do? 
Nah, it was the boy who used the fire extinguisher. So while everyone else was out having fun, they needed to get back at him. By masturbating onto his pillow. All at once. And that's where the counselors walked in. That night, on the last night of camp, they called the parents of all fifteen boys and informed them that their children were all on a bus on their way back to the city, and why they were kicked out. If that were me, I still wouldn't be able to look at my parents the same way ten years later. Not me, but my college roommate. He'd once parked too close to an elementary school. A friend of mine came by and said that he got a ticket. The roommate responded, But there were a whole bunch of other cars parked there. The friend replied, They all got tickets. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.